4,000 years ago, Abraham the patriarch went to school for his whole life. All he did was learn. When he was finished learning, he lived really old, he started teaching. He went all across the world teaching about God all over the world. He got many followers. He had a whole group of people backing him. And that passed on to his son, Isaac, and then his son, Jacob. But then when they got to Egypt, all those people disappeared and Jacob only went in with his 70 immediate relatives. You say 70 people went down to Egypt. Where did all those myriads of people, where did they go? Well, Abraham, he taught many people, Isaac and Jacob. And don't forget about the 12 tribes, right? all of Jacob's sons. It's like they disappeared. It's almost like a societal collapse. It's like the society thought one thing and then suddenly got destroyed. Welcome to the United States and the West at large. In the 17, 1800s, girls were not allowed to go to school. Not that they weren't allowed to go, there just were no girls schools. It just wasn't a thing. Men, if they could afford it, went to school to become famous people. Or, alternatively, they got an apprenticeship where they learned to trade. That was school, and girls did not, and women did not get that. By the nine, by 1900s, this is a few, you know, dozens of years before World War I, uh, yes, they were starting to be brought in, into the school system. In Poland, in actually entire, in, in, throughout Europe, throughout Eastern Europe, the Jewish school called Beis Yaakov, which stands for the House of Jacob, was created. It was the first big Jewish girls' school, and it spread throughout Poland. This was a resurgence in, I don't know if a resurgence, this was a creation throughout, you know, the world of girls being able to be educated. That's where it started. It started at that time. You could argue with me that it happened before, but it didn't happen in this amount. And this was after World War I. This entire network spread throughout, something almost unheard of, of so many. It's one general school that was so interconnected throughout different countries. And then we had World War II. And World War II changed dynamic even more. Women were more important in World War II. They had an integral part, especially on the home front. The home front meaning inside of the United States. If most men were shipped out to war, lots and lots of women had integral parts of society. So now, after World War II, all women, all girls, had to start going to school. Again, timeline is not important. It's just generalizations. And now it's normal. Your mother went to school. Your sisters went to school. And your daughters will go to school. This is normalized. It's got so normalized that they went to public school. It wasn't just girls' schools. Girls' schools have been around for a while. Like I said earlier, they were created the girls' schools in the early 1900s. But by the you know, 1950s and the 1970s, it, everything was obviously mixed. The public school was, you know, public school. But in 2023, that's starting to change. And now, we're starting to go back to this weird place of we don't know what education is. We still had girl schools, but now all girl schools are saying that they would they would like to allow males into the girl schools, and public schools are just becoming places where you can't even learn. Society cannot hold up without education. If we do not have education, we do not have a society. If we do not have society, we do not have 
the human race. It devolves into mass murder. That's how it works. People are inherently evil. We need to be taught to be good. If we are not taught to be good, we just go to our desires. Hitler went to his desires and killed 80 million people. Stalin went to his desires and he killed millions upon millions of people. In China, I think it was Mao, he killed 50 million Chinese people because they weren't educated that that's something that you cannot do. This is a society's purpose, society's obligation to teach every single human that it is bad to do this. If we do not teach this, then it will happen over and over. If we do not teach that girls can have their own space and that's all right, that will not exist. Whatever side of the aisle you are on, whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, you're gonna have a daughter who's gonna go to school and want to have her own space with her girlfriends. That will not exist in a few years. It's a different type of breakdown, but it is a breakdown. And this is what happened during the time of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There was a breakdown. I assume it was Egypt. Egypt was this massive powerhouse of the world. It's sort of like the United States now on steroids. It was full of magic and it traded with all different countries. And a slave that went into Egypt could not leave Egypt. It was like Rome in its heyday. It was like Germany in its heyday. It was the most cultured place on earth. And so the allure of Egypt was second to none. And Abraham can espouse the truth, which now is accepted on 90% of the human population on earth, be it your Jewish, Christian, or Muslim, we all agree that there is but one God. We just differ on how to worship that one God. But we all agree that Abraham came first and he worshiped the one and true God. Christians believe there's a, you know, God had a son, but that's a separate topic for a separate time. Americans think now that religion shouldn't be part of school. That is true in a sense, but it's not true if you want to save humanity. Religion should say, we shouldn't have specific religions, as in we should Christian schools. Our public schools shouldn't be Christian schools. There should be Christian schools, private Christian schools, where Christians can send their kids, just like there should be Jewish schools and Muslim schools. But public schools should be religious schools, but agnostically religious. That means that we should teach that there is a God, and many people believe in different gods, but that that does exist. That's what Abraham taught. Abraham was but one person, and he couldn't fight the allure of worshiping every single God. They, they worshiped the sheep in Egypt, they worshiped the Nile, they worshiped many things. But one thing they also had was immense rich, riches. Egypt was a very rich country, and everyone wanted to be there. So everyone went there, and even the truth didn't hold them back. And only 70 of his immediate relatives went with Jacob into Egypt. Today, we are reaching that point where everyone is fleeing to Egypt. The material wealth that the West enjoys on a daily basis is second to none. We have more wealth than Egypt times a million. Egypt had nothing on us. So now that we're pushing aside religion and embracing the Egyptian values of materialism and idol worship, and idol worship is really the worship of oneself. Because 
you don't want to believe in a higher being. You want to believe in yourself. And to believe in yourself is to worship things that you think are worth it. If I, uh, well, we can give the basic example from the beginning of the Bible, Cain and Abel. Cain, well, I don't remember which is which, but one of them thought the plants were good, and one of them thought the sheep were good. The one with the plants obviously made the mistake, and that's the whole Bible lesson you can, want, you can go to. But the reason why he thought it was good is because that's what he desired. He desired X, and he desired Y. And that, well, really, he desired X. So I think it was Cain. Cain desired the plants, and so he picked the plants. Right now, well, that's so that's what idol worship is. Idol worship is saying, what do I think is good? Because other people can think different things. It's an obvious obvious disprovable theory because well I don't think sheep are so special I don't think this Nile River is so special because I live in the United States I don't know if there were people living in ancient times in the United States but we can assume there are people all over the world and so it wasn't possible for the Nile River to be a god in that sense because well unless you believe in idol worship of yourself and projecting that onto specific things that you desire. And this, that's where we are in today's modern world. We are idol worshipping instead of God worshipping. And we need to get back to that. We need to change the way our public schools are run from idol worshipping and the material wealth that is currently pervasive throughout the West that is destroying our culture, our history, and our youth, and going back to a time when God reigned supreme. Every time that God was part of schooling, history and well, the countries and society flourished. When God was removed and we reverted back to that ancient idol worshipping of oneself put onto other objects, society is crumbled, and we don't want to go back to that. So if you want to save your kids, add some form of religion to it, to their education, because otherwise, your kid will probably turn out into a Nazi-loving Hamas supporter. That is idol worshipping in its truest sense. It's everything that they think. It's everything that they were told to think in school. If you are being taught God in school, then you're not thinking for yourself. You're thinking for yourself in the context of a higher power. But if all it is is idol worshipping and saying whatever you think is the truth, because we're idol worshipping yourself, then your worst thoughts your worst desires become facts. Everyone has their unique dark thoughts, but we say they're from God, they're a test from God, and we can push them away. But with idol worshiping, and you're worshiping yourself, those dark thoughts are actually good thoughts. And that's how you support the Nazis, and you support them less. So we have to actually add God schools. I hope you'll follow along and I hope you'll go to a school board meeting and say what I just said. Thank you.